Like Quran, Louisiana. Quran, <laughs> uh, Louisiana. Louisiana. Right. This is this is God, and they put the picture of the white God right next to their face. The missionaries came. We had the land, and they had the Bible. But when they left, we had the Bible, and they had the land. Mm. Arabic writings, verses from the Quran, uh, some hadiths written on parchments and walls, and, and on mounds and so forth. Uh, in states in this country. In yeah. this country, in Oklahoma, New Mexico. This is documented here, the blonde hair, blue eye, God. Then over here, you go to the, to the nation, and then you got this uh, Pakistani, Farad Muhammad, mm -hmm. as a God. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, welcome to the Dean Shah Media, your host, and I have a special guest. Now, when I say his name, don't jump out of your seat, all right, for those that are not acquainted with the meaning jihad. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you? How are you doing? Ah, alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. Now, so your first name, jihad. Jihad. Some people jumping out of their seats yeah, now. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> they should be jumping for joy. And just simply put, jihad means struggle. We all want to do good things, whether we're Christian, Jewish, otherwise. And that jihad begins with yourself. That jihad, if I want to do good charity, I want to improve my neighborhood, it is a struggle, and we want to please, and if you have faith, you want to please your, your Lord. And that jihad starts with yourself, and so it's different forms of that jihad. It's with your intentions, your tongue, and your hand. Mm -hmm. And if they're, uh, as men and responsible uh, citizens, if something comes to the fore, you might have to raise up to your hand. And a lot of people confuse the word jihad with the word harp. Harp is the disruptive, destructive uh, form. But jihad is always good and just been misappropriated. So those of us that know better has to do a better job rather than cowering and letting the misrepresentation of jihad permeate. Say, so no, jihad, everybody should jihad. You get up in the morning and say jihad. Mm -hmm. I thought you had to make a good uh, grade on my paper. You, you were doing some jihad even before you were a Muslim as a uh, Chicago cop, you know, against the uh, criminals, no? You were a Chicago cop for how long? <laughs> Not too long. It uh -huh. was just a, a fleeting experience with the uh, Chicago Police Department. You also worked for the uh, C C City of Chicago. Chicago in the research department, yeah. uh, uh, doing some statistical. St I was a statistician. Yeah. I don't know how I always get the number running. Uh, Jobs and now you now we're in uh, Miami, huh? You're develop what you do developing here for. I'm a developer, addressing the uh, social economic uh, inequities, uh, working hard to put forward sustainable housing projects. You have to do housing. Uh, if I was, uh, if you go into medical professions, you got surgeons, you got practitioners and therapists, and in economic development, I think. Housing is important because housing buttresses educational attainment, uh, job sustainability, and it tamps down social dysfunctions in the family. So that has always been elusive to uh, uh, African Americans and others that have been shut out. Do you have any life stories? Let's go back to your name before we push forward. Mm -hmm. Tell me, like, this seems like a really good opportunity to share. Like, you know, when. Have you ever had someone, you meet someone who's a Christian or somebody who's not yet Muslim and you introduce yourself and everything smiles right and then you say, what's your name? Jihad. Have you ever had someone get taken back? And then it's an, a great opening to go ahead and yeah. like you just did. Huh. Well, not so much. Surprisingly, with all the hullabaloo about jihad, I, I can't hold on to a lot of uh, bad experiences. People yeah. probably mutter behind my back but it's out of ignorance. And recently somebody say, oh, jihad, holy war. They think they know something, but if you say that, you're gonna get education. So I'm gonna tell you about jihad, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna tell you about you didn't wanna know, because I want to hold on all these distortions about Muslims and Islam, and now you came and showed me that I was wrong. I wish I had kept my mouth shut, so <laughs> I shouldn't have said anything about jihad, because <laughs> now you know better. <laughs> yes, yes. So always a good teaching opportunity. That's real right. important. Yeah. So let's teachable go, moments. Teachable moments. Let's go back to your early beginnings. Now you grew up in a Christian Baptist household. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, tell us about that. How was your, well, your early years? It's mostly about the order. It was really more akin to the more 
moral order that permeated this country and the society. We were moral in, in general. We wasn't uh, buck wild and loosey goosey and extreme in those days. So whether you were Baptist or whatever denomination, what was in the household is respect for elders, uh, seeking education, being a good neighbor, being a good citizen. And the theological part of it was a smorgasbord of different things. So some people were in the Holiness Church or the Sanctified Church or the Methodist or the Presbyterian or the African Methodist, Methodist Episcopalian. But in general, when you walked out of your house, you didn't always know what brand of uh, Christianity folks were. But what we had was that uh, proper upbringing uh, about that, even though it was Christian. Uh, in the early days, I used to see this picture. My father was a commercial artist. <clears throat> and uh, I used to see this picture <clears throat> of a, a white image of Jesus, and he was praying. <laughs> and then later I found out... Where did you see this image now? It was somewhere, one, one of the churches. And then... Was it in the... In the uh, in a, in, a, in, a, in a church. He, yeah. he was up against a rock and he yeah. was praying like this. And he was the white, white Jesus. White Jesus, yeah. yeah. Now, was this in an African American church? or? Yeah, okay. all the African American churches had white Jesus. Yeah. Every one of them. I heard some of them, you go, he, he had uh, African American Jesus. I've seen that. That didn't come until after the nation Islam oh. is, has to be attributed from vanquishing the image of white Jesus in a, a, a good number of churches. So they were responsible for that, huh? They were responsible yeah. for that. Okay. I, I bear witness they wow. were. Okay, so let's go back. So you see the white Jesus now, blue eyes? Of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just like uh, somebody used to tell me a story. They, so they would go to different countries of the undeveloped native country and they come uh, with a picture. This is, this is, this is God. And they put the picture of the white God right next to their face. So the folks said, well, it must be God's cousin or son or grandson, so I better do what he says. Oh. It, was, it was a tool of colonialism. Mm. A tool yeah. of colonialism. Huh? Right. I want, to, I want your minerals and I want your labor and I want to I wanna put you to work that benefits me. And so one of the ways you can do that is like another little amusing thing that we always say is that when, when the, uh, the missionaries came, we had the land and they had the Bible. But when they left, we had the Bible and they had the land. Mm. So Some that was foundation, foundational to the subjugation in the world today. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not the problem of all Christians because there are Christians that are sincere. They just don't have all the information that some of the rest of us have. When did you find out in history, we were talking earlier, and you, were, you, you talk about how 600 years, how the Muslims uh, before Columbus were here, and then they came alongside with Columbus, right, and right. having such a big stake in America. So when people start, you know, some of these Islamophobes and very uneducated people who don't know history, right. but then they come out and say, go back to Africa, go back home. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, th you know, you have the nerve and the gall. Uh, were it not for those Muslims, uh, uh, it's places that, you know, like Quran, Louisiana. Quran, <laughs> uh, Louisiana. Louisiana. Right. Uh, um, Mecca, California. <laughs> Muslims was there. They left their imprint. They, you have writings, or if you were talking about Egyptology or Greek hieroglyphics, but you would see uh, Arabic writings, verses from the Quran. Uh, some hadiths written on parchments and walls and, and on mounds and so forth. Uh, uh, in states in this country. In this know? country, in Oklahoma, New Mexico. This is documented. This, this is, this is documented. It's, facts, it's not fiction. People facts. go look this up. Yeah, it's part of the three-part tragedy that's been beset upon this country. The genocide, uh, a form of uh, uh, slavery, and omission. The omission continues. The omission omitting that history. We just, we're one day out of uh, Black History Month. It shouldn't be such thing as Black History Month. The only reason there's a Black History Month is because they leave out the history. 
And mm -hmm. then if we are successful, we won't need to have a Black History Month. History is history, no matter who does it. And so I think what you were asking me about Muslims, I, you know, there's a great explosion of uh, immigration from people from Muslim countries uh, in the last 20 years. And they come uh, sometimes bending backwards and sometimes I think overdoing it. I think those Muslims that come here should be very presumptive. You don't have to keep apologizing. We used to, I used to criticize us in the black struggle. Stop apologizing for something that you're not responsible for. Stop apologizing for something that you don't do. Take that time and acquaint people about Islam and be matter of fact about it. In fact, you have a stake in this country because Muslims were here, not because they were black, because they were Muslims. So Muslims have been here foundationally. America is an industrial, technological, military giant proportion to the contributions that those Africans uh, brought to this country, they happen to be Muslims. And I say the Muslims because the Muslims that they did, they, the Africans they brought over this country were two types. They were either Muslim or they were animist or ancestor worship. The Muslims were literate, they were educated, they could read. So when they got here, they became the quartermaster of the supplies. And sometimes they was paired with a, a very ignorant, straw boss, white guy who could beat and whip, but he couldn't count, he couldn't read. So he would have, his first assistant would be this African, and the African would be a Muslim, because the Muslims could count and read, they had agriculture, they knew crop rotations, they knew the stars, they knew everything that was part of the Moors. But even more over, archeologically and anthropologically, there's a personality in a Muslim history called Masa Musa. And it says he went from the west, the Maghreb, to the east. He had so much gold, the price of gold fell. He had more gold. And his predecessor set sail to the west with 200 ships that were never seen again. And they came to the Americas. And so some accounts suggest that, uh, that Muslims... Africans were here 800 years before Columbus. And that's why Queen Isabella and Ferdinand got a notion or got a sense something was happening. Mm -hmm. And then they conscripted some navigators and people who can chart the stars, and they were Muslims. Because they built the astrolabe and the telescopes and knew the stars and had the math. So uh, they, they brought them here. So no Muslim has to apologize for it. They had representation, Muslims are here. And because this dean tells us not to set ourselves in what racial dis, uh, distinction, the last sermon that Prophet Muhammad, God be pleased with him, said there, the, 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 the black is not better than the white or the Arab, the, the non-Arab better than non-Arab and, and back and forth. So we were representatives of Islam more than we were representative of just being Africans. Mm -hmm. And that's how we brought here. And we brought those things that are foundational, that made America the economic, industrial, military, technological giant that mm -hmm. it is today. That's deep, wow. Now, if you go from this part of your life, you had a short journey also to the nation, correct? Right. Yeah, can right. you talk about that before we get into what led you to actually coming to true Orthodox is, Islam. Yes. Um, what I later found upon is that it was the struggle. We read the books. One was getting our identity. When I was in grammar school, uh, if you were called black, and you see how people of Caucasian race, they, get, they blush and get red. If you call a black person uh, black, they would, they would blush out, out of shame. Mm. Ashamed. That's how we felt uh, about ourselves, worthlessness. And through the agency of the nation, they gave appeal. Black is beautiful. Black is good. Oh, in fact, you're more than a color. You're not just a black man. You're an African man. They're responsible for we referring to ourselves as African Americans. That is attributed to the leadership of W.D. Muhammad. In terms of that, we got out of that Negro color, even black. Black was too even too limiting. 
for us. So the nation of Islam, and then when I and just go a little bit forward and I come back real quick, is that uh, God, Allah, in the Quran says, I bring the living from the dead and the dead for the living. We were dead to the knowledge of our true selves. We were dead and to the knowledge of uh, our history and our, our contributions. And with the agency of the, the, the nation of Islam, we, one, got a sense of pride in ourselves and understanding that it was good. And we had good spokesmen unwittingly, like Muhammad Ali and Malik El-Hajj El-Shabazz, the commonly referred to as Malcolm X, who were bold, who were bold. There are some Muslims here, they might have been from Turkey and other, Albania or other places, it was pockets of those Muslims here, but they practice their Islam in secret. But the nation practiced Islam in your face. And we learned that God was Allah and that Quran was the book revealed by uh, Allah to his last messenger, Muhammad, may God be pleased with him. That was the jumping off point. So if you look at the nation, uh, Muslims who are strictly adhering to their faith, as they should, would see that it wasn't perfect. But then I go back to, I bring the living from the dead and the dead from the living. So you can use some waste matter and grow some good crops. Mm. So this was way, way more better than that. So uh, this was where we got to the point we are. When if you're a Muslim and you came here in the last 30 years, then thank Allah for the Nation of Islam, Marcus Garvey, Elijah Muhammad, and Warrior D. Muhammad, and, and others. And it's, and it's more others than I can speak to now. <coughs> I should quickly give some attribution to Dr. Uh, ha Hakeem Quick. He's uh, Abdullah based Hakeem Quick. Abdullah Sheikh Abdullah Hakeem Quick. Yeah, Sheikh. He could give you, he can do this much better than me, but that is a great resource in terms of the uh, history, history of, of, of Africans in America. Now, what you talk about is you flip over the one of the biggest newspapers, right? In Chicago mm -hmm. or in America? Mm -hmm. uh, that was the nation news, what, what was it called? Oh, well, it started out as the, well, early, early days was a final call. Then it became call. And then it became Muhammad Speak. Yeah. Then Muhammad Speak became what is known now as the, uh, the, the Bilalian News and then the Muslim Journal. Okay. Those are the evolutionary part. Then uh, Farrakhan changed his name to Abdul Halim Farrakhan, went to Mecca and all that stuff, and was with Warabi Muhammad, but then he broke away and revived the final call. Yeah. So you have in Christianity, where there was the worship of Jesus and then turning him into a God, son of God, into a triune God. Mm. Then you come over to the nation and you flip that newspaper and there in the, in the Articles of Faith, now you have one of the beliefs is believing for our Muhammad is God. So where these things, you know, we have the fitra, the innate disposition, you know what mm. I mean? And now attributing divinity to the creation is something that usually it just kind of your fitra, innate disposition, it kind of rejects. So were you feeling, how, how was your feeling towards going from here, the blonde hair, blue eye, God, then over here you go to the, to the nation and then you got this uh, Pakistani, Farad Muhammad, mm -hmm. as a God? Well, it was kind of dicey, but in a uh, practical sense, they were in a sense saying he was God. Personally, I just never grasped on that. They say he appeared in the person of God, not making any excuses for him, but... It, it's just a little tiny nuance. They didn't say Farad is God. Mm. But that was problematic. That was problematic. And all of us young folks, we were in the, the black movement, in the civil rights structure. We were just learning to love and appreciate our identity and ourselves and learning our history. So you had all this, and then you had this theology, and flawed as it was, it was somewhat acceptable because they also insisted that God was somehow uh, more resembling the black experience and the black per, uh, persona. But uh, what we did, we just got into a staging area to get the true Islam. I mean, we would not have gotten it otherwise 
had we not went through that movement. Mm. And coming through that and looking back on it, we're praying very hard that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides Brother Farrakhan. I mean. He could be uh, the one of the most powerful men on earth if he embraced the full sunnah. And that uh, we pray that he gets this and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives him for his sins, shortcomings, and his, his misguidance uh, on this area. Because uh, that is uh, what is on the black back of that newspaper is antithetical to Islam. It's the opposite to Islam, huh? It, it's, an, and that, it's just, it's just yeah, I mean, you yeah. can't criticize Christianity and embrace that, because that would be the same. But usually people outside the Islam, they focus on these exceptions. Now, like in Christianity, you have countless minutes dominations, denominations, and stuff. And the overwhelming majority of Muslims are on what we refer to as the Sunnah Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And in the practical everyday life, the most impactful part of Islam is the people that follow the right. But generally, we get more inquiry from outside of Islam about those things. They do the same thing about Shia versus Sunni. You know, and we spend more time than it's worth talking about those differences. And so I always like to bring the conversation back to Islam because the proof is in the pudding. So if you present Islam as it is, if somebody would sit down and listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, God be highly praised and glorified, what he said compared to what somebody else said that they don't have any basis, we wouldn't have to have as much conversation about mm -hmm. it. So personally, I try to not take up the oxygen and the air and the time to put too much discussion on it as I could be seeing something that is true and relevant to a true Islam exception because he's not that impactful except that very organized and otherwise progressive. But I will say one thing, it's just like people will say, well, I'm a good person, I do charity, I do work, I'm clean, I'm nice, I'm not racist. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I only created mankind and the jinn to worship me. Mm -hmm. So if you're all that nice and you're good and you're clean and you don't love and respect Allah, God, then it doesn't, it's not going to benefit you that much. You, but God's going to give you some measure. But that might not get you where you want to go. Yeah. It might not keep you out of the hellfire. Mm -hmm. So those who focus on Islam... It's exception, and whether the mistakes they are, maybe they're in the staging ground, and maybe they'll get out of it. But the overwhelming bulk majority of Muslims that's worth talking about is the ones that are practicing right, and the, those who call themselves Muslims, the majority of them are practicing right Muslims. So we keep continuing to be a good example and not spend so much time, because if we turn around to criticize them, that's what the powers that don't mean either side any good because Farrakhan is doing a lot of great things. He's just not, some of us think that he can do a well of a better job of representing Islam if he's going to say Islam. Yeah, it's like, it reminded me, it's like somebody who uh, has all these qualities but they're not showing up to class, mm -hmm. they're not showing up to work, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, mm -hmm. you know, you're not going to pass that uh, test if you don't go ahead and... Uh, show up to class and do what your professor told you to do. But in this greater context, what our creator wants us to do. Now you end up doing that. You end up, in, in the last few minutes that we have, talk about the, the difference now with, when you got exposed to the pure monotheism, the tawheed mm -hmm. of Islam, submission to the creator, not the creation. Uh, well, alhamdulillah, all praise to God that he says, I now have created you except for the worship of me. I remember taking... Uh, philosophy courses at DePaul University. I don't know why a good Catholic university would not spend more time on their theology and without this John Paul Sartre thing. So what's the purpose of life? What's the meaning of man? Well, Islam answered that question. You, you, the purpose of your life is to worship me. You come from me and you're going to come back to me. And I've given you your, your human manual. And I've given you a, a person 
who's that man you're walking, that was this prophet who provided for us a perfect example of human conduct as a husband, a father, a businessman, and as a general, so that we can conduct ourselves, how we can do cosmopolitan things, interacting with people, to intimate things like going to the toilet, eating with our right hand, and cleansing ourselves when we come in from the privity with our left hand. Those are the important things about Islam so that we can conduct our lives. And it is short. And it's short. And, we, and this is a portal. It's a portal. And we're taught that we are created on two natures. And we are going in the mirror and pinch ourselves and say, yes, that's me. But actually, we ride this physical body like you would drive a car. The car is going to wear out. But the superior part of yourself is going to keep going on. That's going to take the responsibility starting in the grave. Mm. And we will get punished in the grave if we didn't follow that manual. And we don't follow that manual, then we are, we're at loss. But the best of those who show mercy is God Almighty. And he's going to give you your justice, even if it's just the weight of a mustard seed. So you have to beware. And when you get in this stage of life, like this clock that's ticking down now, you get more consciousness and what we call, Muslims call taqwa, consciousness about it. It's not the distraction. And that book tells us it's not about the big boogie, the big party, the fancy clothes and all that stuff. It's about that eventual meeting by which there is no doubt, no doubt that you're going to meet this. your Lord. You're going to come out of here and go through this portal called death in the grave, and you're going to be brought out of it. So we live this life so that we can get that uh, permanent, eternal life pleasing him who gave us whatever we got. The next breath that I breathe is given to me, and whatever we got comes from Almighty God. I want to thank you. Thank you for spending some time with us and sharing uh, some of your story. I really appreciate it. Inshallah, it could be an inspiration, motivation for uh, many more out there. My life and my death is for Allah. Alhamdulillah. The Lord of the world. Thank you, Shay. Thank you very much. Alaykum. 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 And thank you guys for tuning in. If you'd like a free copy of the Quran to learn more, visit thedeanshow.com. And if you still have any questions, go ahead and call us at 1-800-662-ISLAM-4752. We'll see you next time here on The Dean Show. Subscribe if you haven't already to get all of our up and coming shows so you don't miss out. And we'll see you next time, inshallah. Until then, peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. And if you like this episode of The Dean Show, like this video, share this video far and wide, and support us on our Patreon page so we can continue this work. Thank you for tuning in. Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum.